SAIC have just shipped 10,000 of the MG Mulan EVs to Europe. In fact, they shipped them a matter of weeks ago, but we found out now they're on the way. We do also now know the price in Germany and the price in China of the MG Mulan EV. So this gives us a really good idea of what the cost will be in the rest of the world. What do I mean by the rest of the world? Well, yeah, the MG Mulan EV is in fact coming to 20 different countries within the next six months. That includes about 19 different countries in Europe, the UK, Australia, and maybe a few other places as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to the new subscribers. Awesome to have you guys. Welcome back, everyone else. And you know, I was excited when I saw this report. The reason being Mulan EV or the MG4, as it's called in some places, is an EV that I am seriously thinking I wouldn't mind one of these. You think about it, right? The top spec model has 550 kilometers of range. It's affordably priced. It's a really, really practical kind of shape and size. And frankly, the interior, the exterior look pretty good. The interior looks really good. The exterior, not bad. And the specifications, the details, what you're getting for your money, I think is really, really good value. So price, what is the price? Price in Germany, there's three different versions. And these prices, I haven't been able to ascertain whether or not they include VAT, value added tax, so German taxes. They may include those taxes. Price of the base model variant is 32,000 euros. The mid spec, 36,000. And the top spec, which is basically the hot hatch, is 38,000 euros. That's the kind of model that actually excites me. It's got a bigger battery pack. It's got four wheel drive, it's got a front electric motor at the rear, and it's got a lot of power. That thing is faster than any other hot hatch on the market. And as you can see, it's priced really affordably. I mean, 38,000 euros for what is going to be a really quick car. Now, let's have a look at the prices in China. Base model variant in China. That one costs 18,000 US dollars. Mid spec model is 23,500 and the top spec model is 26,000 US dollars. That's a hot hat version. 26,000 US dollars. I mean, it's a really, really good deal. What are the prices going to be in Australia, in Europe? Outside of those countries, well, we don't really know, but that gives you an idea. I'm going to go with this. Australia, I believe the bottom spec model is going to cost 39,000 Australian dollars. Mid spec, 45. Hot hatch version, 52,000. That's my guess. We'll see what happens. US, well, I don't know when they're coming to the US yet, but we do know SAIC, who are the parent company of MG, say that they are in fact going to 100 countries. Yep, they're going to be in 100 countries by the end of 2023. So within the next few months, they're going to be in 20 countries. By the end of 2023, 100 countries. I'm guessing there's a pretty good chance you guys in the US are included in that, but I can't be certain. What are the details on the spec? Let's have a quick look and you'll see why I think this is a really compelling car and why you should probably consider one. First of all, SAIC actually make more cars in China than any other company because they have joint ventures with a number of different companies. They make Volkswagens, they have a 50% joint venture there. They make Make a bunch of different cars. They make their own cars. Obviously, they own the brand called MG as well. So this is one of the biggest car companies in the world right now. People just don't realize that. This new car is built on a purely electric platform, but it's actually a bit more advanced than people realize. And it's fitted with a battery called a Rubik's Cube battery, which is kind of interesting. Now, apparently, MG got 10,000 orders on the day this model was released, and they've now got an additional 10,000 pre-orders. But those pre-orders, they're just China. We have no idea what the pre-order numbers are going to be in, say, Germany and other countries where they're going to get the car soon, Australia as well. I don't know, but I think there's going to be a lot of demand for this car. Now, we do know that within the next six weeks, these cars will be available in the following countries, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Italy, Spain, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And it's kind of a competition, MG saying it's direct competitor to the Volkswagen ID3. Personally, I actually think it's better for a few reasons. One of those ID3, ID4 software, it's... Uh, not that good. I mean, for example, when you accelerate in an ID3, a lot of people say that the speedometer, you it jumps. It'll jump from 30 to 50 kilometers an hour. It's just not calibrated that well for the car. And it was one of the key reasons why Herbert Dees was fired because he and well, Volkswagen themselves couldn't really sort out software. Vehicles sat in parking lots for months. 
that's true. And a lot of people have complained about the software in these cars. Now, Volkswagen has never been a company that does their own software. They only do 10% of their software now. They want to get to 60% by 2026. Who knows if that'll happen? I think Volkswagen are making a bad decision here. I think they should have just outsourced it to Huawei or whoever the hell, get someone else to do it, solve your issues because you can't solve them yourself. They're just spending a lot of time, money, effort, emotional money, time as well. And customers, they're not real happy with this. So I think if you're going to get an ID3 or this, Personally, what I'm hearing in this car, reviews so far that I've seen say it is really, really good. So it actually comes in four different variants. You've got the fashion trim, which is 130,000 yen or about 18,000 US dollars. And you've got the luxury trim, which is about $20,000. The flagship version, which is the version with a bigger battery pack, but it has front wheel drive and not a wheel drive. That one is 164,000 yen. So that's around $26,000. And then you've got the high end four wheel drive Triumph, which is basically the hot hatch. Let's just call it the hot hatch because that makes it easy to understand. That's all wheel drive, got a motor at the front and the rear, and it's got the bigger battery pack as well. That one is 186,800 yen. So it's a bargain. I mean, you know, 30,000 US dollars for a vehicle that will do zero to 62 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds. That is incredible really, isn't it? So the first two trims, the cheaper models, they come with a 125 kilowatt motor at the front and a 51 kilowatt hour battery pack. And they have 425 kilometers of driving range, probably real world range, closer to 350. The flagship trim and the hot hatch, they both have 160 kilowatt motors at the front, but the hot hatch also has a motor at the back. The flagship model, because it only has the one motor, it gets more range. It gets 520 kilometers of range. And the hot hatch version gets around 460 kilometers of range because of the fact that it's all-wheel drive. It's got the extra motor, makes the car heavier. It does make it faster as well though. And because of that extra motor, it has 315 kilowatt in total power, which is around about 500 horsepower. So the battery pack in the two higher spec variants is a 64 kilowatt hour pack. And the battery pack size in the cheaper variants is a 50 kilowatt hour pack. Now, both of these vehicles, as far as we know, use a ternary battery, but it's believed that the base spec model may have a lithium ion phosphate battery. That hasn't been confirmed yet for sure. Now, in terms of size, dimensions of the car, length, width, and height, 4,287 millimeters long, 1,836 millimeters wide, and 1,516 millimeters high. Wheelbase is 2.7 meters, meaning the interior space in this car is pretty big. Even though this car is obviously a fair bit shorter than a Tesla Model 3, interior space is probably going to be only a little bit less than the Model 3. But of course, because of the shape of the car, it's got a bigger boot size, or at least a more practical boot size. Other things that I think are worth pointing out, it's got a seven inch digital to screen for the driver that goes right in front of the driver, just sitting just where the steering wheel is. And then there's a 10.25 inch screen in the middle. However, if you get the luxury or the more expensive version of the car, it does come with a bigger screen I'm hearing. Plus it also comes with a 360 degree surround view camera system, keyless entry and an air purification system. So since starting this video, I've now seen the story has been updated. The base model variants with the 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, those are CATL lithium iron phosphate batteries. The bigger pack, a lithium ternary battery pack also from CATL. Another interesting feature about this car, because it has been made with kind of like a cell to pack structure, it means that MG have been able to reduce the weight of the car in comparison to other vehicles that don't have that technology. A little bit like Tesla's structural battery pack, not quite to that level, but a little bit like that. It reduces the weight of the car by around 50 kilos, meaning this vehicle is lighter than some of its competition. It's also a fair bit cheaper. I mean, this is clearly a much better vehicle than a Nissan Leaf, but in Australia, it's definitely gonna be priced lower than the Leaf. And I'm gonna guess probably everywhere else as well. You can see why this is gonna be a popular car. Price is good, right? The specs are good. The looks, the design of it is, it's not amazing, but it's pretty good. And availability here, availability is key. In 100 countries by the end of next year, clearly SAOC, MG, they have some big, big plans for EVs worldwide. They're, they're actually doing a lot more than I give them credit for. 12 months ago, they weren't making that many EVs. Now, things have completely changed. SAIC could be one of the five biggest electric manufacturers by the end of this decade, and also one of the biggest car companies in the world. They're definitely worth keeping an eye on. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.